We are here now. I'm here now. Are you here now? That's the question, really. Are you here now? <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, here we are for the inaugural Virgin Voyage, Virgin Flight of this particular forum, which Ariel has been dreaming into being for many centuries, many moons, many lifetimes. Many, many. So why don't you tell us a little bit, Ariel, about what we're up to here? What are we in cahoots about? We never know what we're up to, but well, we can true. try to talk about it. That's true. Let's see. What we're up to is, hmm, as a planetary collective, we're up to all of our hearts gathering together as one and lifting the whole planetary frequency together. Doesn't that sound fun? <laughs> all together. It really is. And so what we dreamed up was that now that I'm a wacky wise woman, I am of age, 70 that is, of an age that I might be able to be just as wacky as I want to and get away with it. Exactly, exactly. So we dreamed this up, that there would be a forum for me to be as wacky as I want to as a wise woman and to interface with the beautiful temple keepers that are holding space for the eventuation of a physical temple being built here in the Bay Area. And today, it is my pleasure to be hosting the Goddess of Love, oh, Kalila. Goddess of Love. So when Ariel and I got talking about this new technology, this amazing gift from the Goddess, this ability for us to be here real live time with you, Ariel said to me, oh my goodness, this is what I've been waiting for. This is the thing I have been waiting for to connect with the global community. So first and foremost, what we want to do is just welcome Welcome all of our sisters and brothers from all over this beautiful planet. All of you who are beaming in from who knows where. And what I want to let you know is, is that on this interface, we have an ability for you to type in, and you'll see there's a chat window on the right-hand side of your page as you're looking at us, and you have the ability to type in, look there, my fingers typing in, <laughs> to type in questions, comments, reflections, beauty practices, or other such nonsense that you might want to share with us as we go through this process and we're going to be asking you some questions so feel free to you know uh, whenever you like really just pop, pop in a question or a comment and we would love to um, involve you in that ah, ah, so yes. today's call is all around getting real with what is real beauty um, Yes. What is real beauty? Well, that's a great question, isn't it? So I'm posing this question as the goddess of love from the goddess of love's temple, which is really the goddess of love, Aphrodite. And you'll see we are in the temple yard, which is filled with light and beauty this day, just to welcome us. Is that, you know, the question of what is real beauty is a really deep question for me as a temple keeper. And it's a really deep question that I wanted to bring in communication with Ariel as the wacky wise woman because the truth is what is real beauty is subjective what is real beauty is what's inside of each one of us and we know this intuitively but for many of us it's a journey to come into understanding and embodying what that beauty means and so I'm gonna offer some beauty practices from the goddess of love temple and so am I and you can bet they're not going to be the ones you're used to <laughs> <laughs> so where do we begin where do you want to begin Ariel mm, well where do I want to begin yeah I think I want to start, you know, roll the movie reel back to the point where we're in the Renaissance, okay? In the Renaissance, there was not enough food, and so the standard of beauty uh -huh. became fleshy, gorgeous, opulent women. You know what I mean, Jean? <laughs> and now that food is plentiful for a good part of the planet, the standard of beauty is to be thin. What does that mean to you? That means the standard of beauty is unattainable. That's what that means. And that means the end result is feelings of inadequacy, feelings of not being enough, feelings of never being beautiful. Crazy. These perceptions are crazy. So our media promulgates them in every mm -hmm. possible form, in magazines, in TV, you know, you're always looking in the mirror to see how you stand up, I'll tell you, you know, the thing. <laughs> and you get focused outwardly on what outward beauty is instead of what is inward beauty. So 
Now we have an opportunity to wrest back the definition from the culture as to what culture says is beautiful and redefine it for ourselves, each one of us defining mm -hmm. what is beauty, really, what mm -hmm. is beauty for me. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what the overview is here of what we're looking at, redefining it so that the culture is not who is defining what beauty is. We have a chance to make a huge planetary impact if we take that back. We take the power back to define what beauty is. That's right. Because you see, this is the thing. My obsession with this re-owning of the beauty within us is this. I have a real inkling from the goddess. Like I got a nudge on the shoulder a few months ago with a whisper in my ear of her saying to me, you do realize that reclaiming your own beauty is a radical act. It's a revolutionary act. It's an act of taking back the power inside of yourself and actually freeing you, me, all of us to actually be the beauty that we already are and to impact the world from mm -hmm. that lensing. And this is my sense is that as we really embody Aphrodite, as we really come to know who she is within us and what that glow of inner beauty really is and beauty as you have said as the pathway to the divine or a pathway to the divine if we really start to live that and embody that it changes how we walk in the world it changes Absolutely. the frequency and the coherency because really what is beauty beauty to me is that a feeling of harmony and coherency it's a feeling it's not a thing mm -hmm. it's a mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. and so Beauty is in the laughter, beauty is in the tears, beauty is in a feeling that I have inside of myself that belongs in here. It's not out there. It's not, it's not an objectification. And what we judge as being beautiful is based upon geometry, right? I mean, that's... At, one, at the ah. very base level. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's for later. That's for later. Shh. Just you quiet down now. Down. <laughs> They wanted to get on the app. They do. Yeah, how is it? You won't know who they are, but you will learn too. Yes, exactly. So I, I, mean, I, but I want you to speak to that a little bit, Ariel, because there is a, there is um, a sacred geometrical basis for what we understand beauty to be. And can you kind of tie that in a little bit? Because I think it is important mm. for us to understand that there is a coherency around right, beauty. Right. Right. If you look at a Leonardo da Vinci painting, for example, right. and you overlay the geometry of what that painting is, it's in perfect proportion. And people who walk into a building that is built on sacred geometry breathe out. They feel harmony. They feel peace. They feel beauty because it's in alignment with the proportions of beauty that the divine embedded through sacred geometry into all form. Whether it's a flower, a building, a painting, um, Whatever it is, everything at the very bottom level is based on sacred geometry. And that is one of the major definitions of beauty, that it's in harmonic proportion to the divine. And so we consider um, the beauty of any object at a, at a visceral level. We get the geometry of it. We don't maybe know about it cognitively. Right. But we look at something, we go, wow, that is really beautiful. Right. And so it's a feeling. Yeah, it's, it's a feeling. It's a feeling based on this sacred geometry. And I want to hold up something here which has a sacred geometry to it. Oh, yeah. For you all to look at and see. Okay, so this is, you know, we all understand this as beautiful, the rose. I'm going to really bring her up close so that you can enjoy her. She's from oh, the yeah. Temple Garden, huh. right? So you're going to see there this beauty that is in the rose has a geometric nature to it. There's a there's a spiral, spiral in there, right? There's the spiral, the golden mean spiral in there. But we don't think that when we look at the rose. That's no. not what I'm thinking. I'm not thinking, oh, oh that's really, golden mean spiral. Yeah, very beautiful, very beautiful, <laughs> terribly evolved and very beautiful. No. Now what I'm feeling is I'm feeling what it is to be received into that rose, to to smell it, to touch it, to to let it on my face, mm. to let it be um part of who I am, let myself become one with that, right? That's the beauty practice for the rose. I'll get into that in a minute from Aphrodite's <laughs> temple. But anyway, I, I just I just love this conversation, Ariel, because what I'm what I'm feeling is is that if we as men and women, priests and priestesses of the divine feminine, really can reclaim what beauty actually is mm -hmm. and really walk in that beauty way, 
which is a whole way of being in the world, and not be, be so obsessed with this judging comparison competition mm. that we're going to not only just change the paradigm, but pop through to a whole different way of living life. Oh, hear, hear. So that's my intention behind being here. When I, when I posited that we do this call was, was so that we can actually get together with all of the beauty of you out there, all of our goddesses, priestesses, priests who are walking this path already. So I want to just give you a shout out before we get into some more specific beauty practices. Mm. Um, who we've got here? We've got R R Risa, and she says, um, oh, oh, I love it. There's lots of comments coming through. So oh, I'm going so to exciting. Risa. So she said, yeah. and then there is the beauty way of the so-called first peoples, a way to live in complete harmony, harmony with all that is. Exactly. That's what we were speaking about, this principle of harmony and Beauty. Are you looking for a beauty project? <laughs> Never mind. Oh, she's looking for, you. I'm looking for my glasses. <laughs> of course, you know. I, I do, I do. Yeah. Um, I just want to give a shout out to some of our priestesses here um, Kat and Michelle and Risa and Fiona and Ilana. Ilana. Who says, Hail to the rain. I'm here in the drought ridden yet gorgeous Berkeley sunshine. And then she shouts out, <laughs> Yoni! <laughs> So we receive your beautiful I guess that's your idea of beauty. What I do you think, think so. Okay. I think so. Just okay. like this beautiful Just flower. Just like that beautiful yes, flower. Yes, exactly. exactly. Um, all is be Yes, Marjorie. Marjorie. Oh, oh, Marjorie from last night. She's posting a poem for us. So good, good. So I just want to give a shout out to all of you who are on here. Wendy and Itza and... Oh, oh, go oh, back to Itza. Oh, Itza here from, from Montana. Montana. I, I can, can hear. hear. Yay! Yes, we can. Gabriella and Sarah. So a bunch of you on here with us, and probably more who haven't typed in yet. Remember, you can type in and let us know what your beauty practices are. Also, you know, we're going to be talking about this as we go along, but one of the things that has played a big piece in my life and why I chose to stand in the temple of the goddess of love and to hold this temple was a healing for myself and for the collective around not feeling beautiful. Mm. Around comparison and judgment, and I'm going to I'm going to get into that a little bit later in this call in terms of offering some practices and some what I consider to be revolutionary ways of clearing and truly walking um, the path of allowing yourself to be beautiful and celebrating the beauty in others. And so I'm I'm seeding that. But first and foremost, I'd like to know from the wacky wise woman who's clearly traveled the path oh, yes, of the mortal have. coil of being <laughs> in this physical body. How is it to be seventy? Well, no different than any other day. I am still the divine child that I always have been, as you can tell quite easily. Exactly. And now I just have the freedom to be it all the time instead of trying to be a serious adult. Oh gosh, yes. You know, trying, trying, <laughs> trying. So I, I'm, but I'm curious because you, you know, you are different than you were 20 years ago, oh, yes. and embracing beauty from where you are now. What does that look like? Because I think that that's part of getting to go through the myth of the beauty myth. Mm, mm. Well, you know, the interesting thing is that as you age, the energy that you are starts turning inward mm. instead of outward. Mm. And so it has all these ramifications that are so beautiful because you have more time mm. to focus on the inner and not mm. standing in the mirror going, well, am I going to, you know, stand up and, uh, you know, you have so much more energy mm. and that's what I notice more than anything mm. else to focus on things that are really important in our spiritual journey. And that is why you turn into the wacky wise woman because you recognize that everything is genuinely impermanent. And thus, you better get on with the things that last. <laughs> you know what I mean, Jean? So that is the important thing. Those are the important things. And, you know, it's poignant. Like, I've been um, a singer my whole life. Oh. Singing has, like, been my passion. And now my voice cracks. And it does all this stuff. And part of me was so sad about mm. that because that is the nature of things beginning the dissolution process but the other part of that is that I have so much more energy now on the to hear the inner sounds and now I do the nada practice which is listening for the soundless sound with unbelievable experiences because I'm not so outwardly focused on sound did that ask your answer your question oh I have no idea why well, well 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 I, I think what it did for me was let me know this and, and I was having this conversation yesterday with another sister, and I want to celebrate all of the women 
and who are in this transition in their own lives. Like you talked about the energy coming inside as we go older, right? This this notion, and she was talking about what happens at menopause. Mm. Oh, what happens yeah. at Big that time. that that transition from perimenopause into menopause when we start to hold the blood inside and it no longer menstruating, and how um, that is that process of what you're speaking about of being more internally focused right. and more centered in what's real here now and the impermanence but also the power of no longer bleeding but being in a different phase of your life where you're not concerned so much with what others are needing from you or wanting from you mm -hmm. you just get to be more yourself exactly so my my quest here has been before we get to that point biologically <laughs> yes. is to be able to focalize that inside of ourselves to find out what that inner beauty what I call the inner temple right that place where we reside how do we come inside to that and actually create practices that strengthen mm -hmm. that feeling of inner beauty mm -hmm. so I know you have some practices Oh, Ariel. She doesn't woman. get to be 70 years old and be the wise woman without having a few beauty practices under her sleeve. I do. I do. Or so, uh, elsewhere. Oh, elsewhere. Oh, <laughs> or up your skirt or wherever else you put them. So I would love to invite you to share some of your inner beauty practices in this temple of beauty and goddess of loveness. Oh, delighted. Delighted. Okay, good. Okay, well, here we go. First of all, you'll want to get in a position where you can really do this with me. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Okay, oh, oh, okay you oh, ready? Shh, okay. Shh. So, first of all, okay. you want to get as close okay. as you can okay. to okay. your I'm screen gonna, gonna, or a mirror or something where you can wrinkle up your face as much as possible. Okay. Okay, okay this practice is the Kegel wrinkle <laughs> making <laughs> practice. So, you squeeze your yoni, that's the Kegel part. <laughs> And then you wrinkle up your face as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Oh. Kegel wrinkle. Kegel wrinkle. Kegel wrinkle. Kegel wrinkle. Kegel wrinkle. Kegel wrinkle. As long as you can. And then, and then you relax. <laughs> then you relax. Yes, exactly. Agree. See, because uh, who would want to Botox all of these lines away that are the markers of my incredible journey? I mean, sad, happy, all the things, laughter, everything is on my face. Written right there. Yeah. So why would I want to take those away? I mean, when you look at me, you know I've been down the road. You know what I mean? It's right there. I've been down the road. And all that I am in all this it mir is mirrored here for you to read the lines and to say, wow. She's had a full life. That girl has had one hell of a full life, which I have. And those wrinkles are my honorarium mm. for that. Mm. And I would never Botox or cut or whatever people do with her. I said, I'm not judging it. I just want you to know I would never do that because it's precious to me. It shows where mm. I've been. It's a roadmap of my soul. Mm. And I truly honor every wrinkle that I've got on my face. Mm. And I don't look in the mirror and go, oh, my God, look at the damage. Mm. Mm. You know, I wake up and am grateful that I can get up in the morning and enjoy <laughs> yet another beautiful day. <sighs> and so... Practice your wrinkle kegel, wrinkle kegel, wrinkle kegel. <laughs> Practice, and you will be able to be in that position earlier than I was in this lifetime. And so I want to invite us, any of you, any of you beautiful priestesses who want to write in about your experience doing this exercise, this beauty practice from the wise woman, so her wrinkle kegel or a kegel wrinkle. <laughs> Um, and just to let us know how that is for you, because this is my so so talking from a little little different perspective on the on the scale of life cycle, but also just my own journey with my wrinkles. I want to be really honest: is that you know I started wrinkling up super early because that's my genetic history. Guess what? That's where I come from in my family. My grandmother was as wrinkled as a prune by the age of fifty, and and that's just the way it is. And so I have her skin. And I started to wrinkle early and I was freaked out by it. I was. I was freaked out by mm. it. And I want to own that because that's part of my own journey as the goddess of love to and be most transparent. All of us. Right. And most of us do freak out because our culture starts to undervalue us once mm. we get wrinkly, right? We don't see pictures and images of beautiful older women. We're starting to. 
we're starting. We are starting. We're to. starting to. But the truth is, is that that's been a ten-year journey for me. From four, from thirty-five through forty-five has been the journey of accepting this face as it is. And I want to tell you about an inner beauty practice that I had oh, for that. Because okay, so I'm going to be a self-confessed. Um, Vulnerable, vulnerable around this because I think it's really important. So I probably have spent I don't know thousands of dollars on face creams. Let's be honest. I don't know if you. I'm alone here or I'm with <laughs> no, you. No, I'm right. sure you're not. You know, and, and <laughs> fall and foul to all of the hype around what it is to be beautiful, right? How we can be beautiful, uh, and, and the promises of all these serums and God <clears> knows what else. And some of them worked a little bit, but the truth was that none of them worked really. And I want to tell you why I don't think they worked. And it's really profound. This realization came to me. I don't think they worked because as I was putting them on my face, I was trying to eradicate parts of myself. Mm. I was putting mm. them on my face going, please, you know, whatever, like with the intention of like, I don't like this and get rid of this and get rid of that, right? So the energy that I was actually putting these on my face with was the energy of negation. It was the energy of trying to get rid of something mm. as opposed to the energy of love. Mm. Oh, excellent awareness. Right? Isn't that a different awareness? Totally different. So I had a revolution about, now oh, I don't know, a year ago. And I want to show you this revolution. It's really simple. I started to take that into my own hands. And you'll see that this little body has the word harmony written on it. Has it what? It has the word harmony, harmony. written on it. Which is I thought you said comedy. Comedy? <laughs> yes, it has comedy written on it. Close, though. Right. And mm -hmm. what I want to share with you is this. is I started to take over my own beauty regime, my own beauty practice around my skin thinking of the skin was this amazing organ that covers my entire body and that taking care of it was an act of love, not an act of trying to change something. Mm -hmm. So I did some research and I came up with all of the organic oils and ways that I could make a facial oil that would be a serum that would be about applying and ingesting nourishment and love for my skin. Oh, how beautiful. And so I changed the whole ritual around how I take care of my skin and I made it into a love practice and so now I apply this every day and I make it myself with essential oils and other organic oils so I know what's in it I infuse it with my own energy I change the energy of what's happening in here and we all know how intention is the magic that mm. changes everything and then when I'm applying it to my skin not just my face but my body too I'm applying it with love mm. and gratitude and I have to say that has changed everything for me about how I feel beautiful and mm -hmm. it's and it, and because what it's doing is I'm not now paying those companies who are making those wrinkle creams that are meant to get rid of my wrinkles I'm actually taking a moment to make a, a beauty ritual from the goddess of love temple so I'm happy to post on our Facebook page the ingredients that go into this so you can do this for yourself. Or make your own. Yes, and make your own. Yeah. Exactly. Make your own oil that will be really good for your skin and really good for your heart and really good for your temple and really good for the planet because it's organically farmed, sustainably farmed oils. So there we are. Fabulous. That's, what a fabulous that's really a beauty, beauty practice. practice, right? Yeah. I know. So let's just check in and see. We've had some comments. Okay, Reese is having divine laughter with Kegels. Well, we all know the divine laughter is the pathway to beauty. We do. Right. We do. Um, mm -hmm. Marilyn, I love your mug. <laughs> oh, you see my mug. Are you talking Can about this face mug? Or, or that are you talking mug? about that mug? There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Deborah, love this idea of creating your own beauty project infused with energy and applied with love. Yes, yes, yes. Please do it. Risa, divine. Yes, I love your. Uh, Christina, love, loving greetings and much gratitude to the luminescent ladies divine. Oh, how sweet. Adele DeMarco, beauty equals feeling. So resonant. Please comment on your sense of the connection between beauty and shared power. Whoa. Oh, that's, that's, that's the gauntlet word. being dropped. <laughs> Okay, what okay. do we think about that? Okay. Beauty <clears throat> and shared power. Because this goes into what I was talking around around competition and comparison. And well, maybe judgment. she's segueing you right into it. It's well, it um, like but let's feel into it together. Because okay. this, is, this is part of our practice. That's the major part of the practice. Let's all feel into this together. And feel. All of us. Oh, a crow just went over. That's the wise woman's totem. Ah, Thank ah, you. Ah, ah. Okay. So let's all feel into this together. What is the connection between beauty and shared power? I want I, I want to feel into yeah, this as a community. Let's all feel that mm. truly. Mm. Ah. 
For me, when one feels beautiful, oneself, one is more likely to want to share power. There is nothing to compete with. If you know that your beauty is totally unique and totally you, why would you want not to share power? Yeah. So it's like these flowers, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so it, we've got these flowers, and they're all uniquely beautiful. I mean, just take a look for a moment at what we have here. Yeah. And are we in competition? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. Either. I think you're beautiful. I think you're beautiful, I too. I think you're beautiful, too. You see how Aww. that works? Shared power. <laughs> That's my perception. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so my perception is also very similar and I'm going to put them all together in a little bunch so that you can see them and how unique all of that is and how one empowers the other in the beauty. You can oh, take them separately. So gorgeous. We could take them separately and they're beautiful but when we put them together something really amazing Magical happens. Magical happens. That's why we like to make bouquets of flowers, right? It's because something happens when we start to bring together those different forms of beauty. They enhance each other's power. Precisely. That's it. Instead of detracting, they enhance each other's power. I, I can't get over how beautiful that is right there. Isn't I just it? wanted to drink it in. This is a goddess of love beauty practice right here. Wow. Is to let yourself drink in this beauty it, as nourishment, mm. as something that fills you with beauty. So just let yourself actually ingest this. Expand yourself to become part of this bouquet. Mm. And a goddess of love practice for me is allowing myself to commune, the energy of becoming one with so that I'm no longer separate to. But I mean, really, just take that, I mean, look at that iris. Mm. Look, at, look at that. Wild iris, hmm. wild roses, and this beautiful, I don't even know what that little flower is. See, we don't need to know her name to know how beautiful she is. Hmm. But letting that be absorbed into your being as a frequency, coherency, nourishment boost. This is one of the goddess of love practices that I do every day, is, is take a moment to stop for a beauty bomb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right to bomb myself with beauty. So basically, to bring this into my being, into mm. your being. Mm. Can you tell I'm a flower fairy? I'm a flower fairy. I can't get over flower fairies. So here we go. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. Thank you for that question. Adele. Yes, that was great. That was great. Mm. And, and, and so I will say a little bit more about this from the standpoint of what detracts from our shared power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because okay. in my experience, this is also really powerful, is one of the greatest shadows of goddess of love, as we all know, is comparison and competition and seeing ourselves as less than and projecting our beauty onto someone else. That's really what I've discovered it is. It's like when you're looking at someone else and you're thinking, wow, they're so beautiful, they're so this, they're so that. It's the disowned part of self that we're projecting, projecting. onto them. And that is an act of disempowerment. It's like a power leak in our own system. So a beauty practice for allowing yourself to enter into beauty. And I'm going to, if you look at the um, Goddess of Love missive on the Sanctuary newsletter, which will be hitting Ooh, yes, your... please make note. Which is hitting your email box just as we speak. Well, relatively. Relatively. <laughs> you, you will find in there this, this practice written out. It's a, be it's a beauty practice that I'm, that's offered from the Goddess of Love Temple this moon. Essentially what it is, is to embrace anyone that you're in comparison and competition with. And so the invitation is right now to just think of someone in your life that you compare yourself to. Really get that person in mind. Yeah, and just feel them. Close your eyes. And I want you just to feel them and to bring them into your mind's eye, to actually see this person, this being. And it could be someone famous, it could be someone who's your next door neighbor, it could be a sister of yours, but you're in comparison. And it might not just be physical comparison, it could be any kind of comparison. But you're comparing yourself to them and secretly you're in competition with them. In other words, secretly, you probably wouldn't own it because it's that dirty, messy, nasty stuff, right? <laughs> but secretly, you can't quite let them shine in their beauty because you can't quite let yourself shine in your beauty. Stop. Underscore. 
You want to underscore it? Before Say I that again. That's the key. You can't quite let them shine in their beauty and magnificence because you won't let yourself shine in your own beauty and magnificence. And so you have to kind of undo them in some way. And usually that comes through judgment. Right? We have a judgment about them or we have a contraction around them or we shut down our heart around them. So this is the clue. If you're having a hard time finding someone that you're doing this with, think of anyone in your life and just scan your body and see, am I completely open-hearted with them? Because that's really mm. whether that's, what, the marker. that's the marker of knowing. So I want you to see. So once you find that person or that, 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 that in your mind's eye, I just want you to feel what happens to your body and your heart. The contraction, the constriction. Just scan your body. What happens when you compare yourself? I can speak into what happens for me. When I'm comparing myself, um, I become less generous. Oh, yeah. I become a little bit more clipped somehow. Like my energy becomes a little less... Radiant. Thank you. Yeah. Radiant. Radiant. That really right. does cut your radiance. Cut, cuts my radiance. And so what my patient to you is, is as you feel this person... Just totally owning that shadow and, and, and just totally owning the part of you that's doing that. Totally own the part of you that is in judgment first or in comparison. And just loving that part of yourself. Just love the part of you that somehow is scared to stand in your own power. Somehow is not willing to stand in your own beauty. Mm. And that's the first act of love towards yourself. That is c cultivating that radiance, right? right. Yeah. And I just, I, I'm going to leave it there for this moment. So just, just there's, there's another, another couple steps to this which are in the newsletter that I want you to look at. But I want to leave it here because I just want you to really feel first the love towards your, that part of your own being. And you might just bring that love into your own heart. I'm holding my own heart right now. And that's where it starts. We're all beings. Right. The inner beauty practice starts with loving the parts of ourselves that we're judging through the other. Right? Mm -hmm. And loving the part of ourselves that's stuck in the shadow or stuck in that perception of reality and just loving her. <sighs> so we're loving competition into dissolution right now. We're mm -hmm. loving comparison into dissolution. And we're loving the hardening that happens in ourselves into dissolution. And this has an amazing de-wrinkling effect. <laughs> yeah! In your inner it aura. Down. It does! <laughs> it does! Just remember that. Love, yeah, love like smooths and irons out. Whereas you've seen it when someone gets angry, their face gets right? all like, ah, yeah. looking like calm. You know, oh, I mean, hard. but when they're in love, everything just melts and they look, Fabulous and radiant. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can make millions of dollars doing oh, this. Millions, millions. <laughs> all right, we're going to come and see what some of you all are saying over here. So, uh, Granny, put your glasses on. Oh, get my glasses. Okay. 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 My glasses. Okay. So, Marjorie says, you know, with life expectancy being so much longer now, I personally am thinking a hundred or so, and menopause for me was age age fifty one. I'm now sixty five, which means I have approximately one third, third of my, of my life, life in life. front of me. Yes. So being a crone is a much longer phase of life than the maiden and the mother phase. I think it's by divine design. Goddess knows best. I so agree. This is the best part of life. Woo, I love it. And um, Lisa says, love that, Marjorie. Leah Lamb, I just adore both of you. Oh, please do this often and lots. Kiggle, wrinkle, kiggle, wrinkle, kiggle, wrinkle, kiggle, wrinkle. Oh, Adele. Ooh, fun. Beauty practices. Thank you for the invitation. Mine... Um, oh, drawing the sacred geometries and current color, coloring them in. I love that. Sonia, you two are adorable. Loving this. Love beauty wisdom. And Fiona, it's like nature. Nature simply exists to be beautiful. There is no other person, pu purpose oh. but to share their expression. Uh, okay, so let's say that one more let's time. Let's say it again. It's like nature, says Fiona. Nature simply exists to be beautiful. Mm. Period. Hmm. So imagine for a moment that we exist just to be beauty here. Isn't that fabulous? I think that's fabulous. And that beauty is as diverse hmm. as 
every other Everything flower in nature. and plant. So if we look around in nature, I mean, I'm just looking at where we are right now. You know, there are, oh, I want to tell you a story about that. Oh, I have a story. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. So this is the deal. I moved into this beautiful temple space and in the yard here, if you could see this, you can see there's all these rose bushes, right? Well, when rose bushes are not in bloom, they're kind of freaking ugly. When no, I first in but, real hang on, terms. hang on. This is the this is the joke. This is yes, the okay, okay, joke. Okay, okay. So I all went along. I was looking at these barren rose bushes, going, they're kind of nubby, stubby looking things, and I don't find them very pleasing to my eye. Right? Come summertime, when these incredible roses began to bloom from these nubby, stubby bushes, I understood the nature of all of it being beautiful, of what was needed. So that alchemy of bringing all things together, the apparent things that we don't think are beautiful, that actually are germinating beauty from within. They're in a different part of the cycle. Exactly. Yeah. So whether we see the rose bud, or the rose in full bloom, or the rose hip, or the rose in its dormant phase, every part of that has beauty to it. And that was a great lesson for me, mm -hmm. because I really was not loving those nubby rose bushes. <laughs> and now, I recognize that it's all just part of one cycle of beauty. Yeah. Thank you. Well, good. Thank you, Fiona. Fiona, yes. That's great. Oh, 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 here. Deborah. An older woman told me as she grayed and got older, she was ignored, like being waited on in a store. She dyed the front part of her hair red in a creative way. <laughs> I like that. I want to know what that was. <laughs> Suddenly she was noticed. Perhaps she broke out of the current cultural archetype of older woman. I wonder as we age that we don't, on some level, I wonder as we as we age that on some level we don't do... Fall into the current archetype you. of what older is. And don't think about creating our own. Any thoughts? Well, Ooh. that's a given. Given. Isn't it? From what we've been saying here, we're all unique beings, so of course we're going to have unique expressions in whatever way, hair, you know, wacky outfits. Wacky outfits. I love it. Wacky outfits. <laughs> I'm holding down the pillow of beauty over here, as we can see, where we're yes. going to be beautiful. No, this is beautiful. What exactly. are you talking about? Exactly, exactly, exactly. This is a wise so, woman. What I, lo I love about what Deborah, what you're saying, though, is is redefining what it means to be, to yes. become <laughs> older, right? That. And redefining what it means to, to be uh, to be a crone or to be beautiful at any age. And, and basically, who, who gets to say what that is. Nobody gets to say what that is. We get to say what it is. Exactly. That's the whole point of taking beauty back inside and saying, you know, I get to define what the beauty is. I get to walk in my own beauty. I see you have something in your hand. Yeah, I do. Well, it's just because it was just exactly what you were talking about. Well, good, so then. I thought one of my Wacky Wise One products called Magical Sizing <laughs> Spray. Magical. But you notice light body Magical side thing. that exists in your grocery store. Um, <laughs> go figure. How did they know about what they could do to spray their light body to magically size themselves all together? But they do. <laughs> so I'm just bringing this up because my lifelong concern, and I won't say battle as usual with weight in my life, has really been an interesting journey for me yeah. and maybe for you too. And so what I want to do is encourage you to get some magical sizing spray and start loving yourself just the way you are. Psst. Love yourself just, just the, the way, way you, you are. are. Because that is what magical sizing spray does. Oh. It's a simple thing. But, you know, all of a sudden, mm. I mean, you know, I'm a big woman. Well, let me tell you, I'm a big woman, if you know <laughs> what I mean. So it's coherent for me. If I were, when I was thin, very thin, I was so oversensitized that it was impossible for me uh, to remain on earth. And so for me, this is reasonable. This, this is good. This is beautiful. And I'm good with that. I don't need to have it be anything else. And so I encourage you, if you have an issue, get yourself some magic sizing spray. Wasn't that just right? It was one of my practices. I know. Well, excuse me. That was one of her wise woman practices. Yes. So another beauty practice that I have... I'm going to demonstrate it oh, good. right now. Okay, good, so good. this goes along with that beauty as shared power and seeing the beauty in all. So this is this is it. So you know how they have those beauty contests, and 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 they. I, I can't believe that we still do have them, but apparently we do. I don't see them so often, but Miss USA and all the rest.
aspect of it, right? And that whole idea of the notion of like you are the most beautiful. Yes. Right. Well, I have a I have an equality game with that, which is this, which is actually offering up the crown of beauty to all beings. So I'd like to crown you oh, as beauty right this you. moment oh, and uh, I would like you to crown me oh, as beauty. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. So, so you see, and what I'd like you to do is to consider this, oh, hang on a second. Oh, <laughs> bloody see a thing. Oh, there we are. Marvelous. Oh, what I'd actually, like, oh, there you go. Don't wait to give you, oh, look. No. Very nice. Fair enough. So, what I'd like you to consider doing in your life life with a sister, particularly one that you might have had any kind of niggling Issue. beauty doubts, whether you're niggling competition or comparison doubts, is to actually formally crown, crown her. her. Yes, crown Very her. Very simple. Give her a crown of some description. It doesn't have to be one like this. It could be any kind of crown. Any crown. Yeah. But you can crown her and any other sister that you want as the beautiful goddess that she is. And whilst we're laughing about this, I want to come underneath it a little bit and just have us feel into what that actually means because it, what it actually means is to let go of needing to be the best let go of the whole paradigm that there is one winner uh -huh, yes or there is one who is more beautiful and when we do that when we let go of that notion that that's how our culture needs to be defined that's how we need to define success all the rest of it then we have something really powerful on our hands, which we have a whole slew of us, which is really what these calls are about, right? They're transmissions and empowerment tools for us as a collective to begin to walk on this planet together in a different vibration, to remember who we are. And mm. in doing so, my invitation would be etherically, physically, to crown every being you find as mm. the beauty that they are. Mm. But start with one. Start with I one. I mean, let's get practical. Somebody you have... One. You know, maybe you compared Actually, yourself to yes. offer them a gift. Offer them a gift. It makes a difference that you do it with one person, yes. really, one literally. One person at a time. Literally one person at a time, which is why I wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to do, to acknowledge the other's beauty and to just say, I see the beauty in you. And, you know, you have that namaste. I see the, the beauty in you. you. I see you. I see you. I see you too. <laughs> We see you. Okay, so we have more comments here. This is lovely, isn't it? It's like a radio show. It's like a chat show with the goddess. It's just so delightful. Oh, I, so did, I fun. didn't think it would be so absolutely as fun as it is, and it is. Isn't it just it's the delight. funnest thing ever? Okay, so let's have a little look and see what other people are oh, saying yes. here. Brandy glasses. Ilana, you are sexy and free. <laughs> oh no, sexy Fifi. Sexy <laughs> Fifi. Sorry, but you're free as well. Oh, you're free too. Yes, yeah. gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Christina says, yes, I too create a fa fabulous rose body oil that I charge with sacred geometry crystals uh -huh. and uh -huh. color therapy that I send my love to. Makes all the difference in the world. So, some other people are onto this practice. Oh, I'm such so a grateful. great practice. So, is there any other practices that you have that you want to share, Miss Ariel? Because oh. I know that there was others that, that were useful that we discussed maybe. Hmm. Well, you know, um, oh, there are always so many practices. Let's well, see. Well, one thing. Oh, well, yes, yes. Let's see. Let's see. Well, did you do another? Oh, um, no. There's one more comment. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Ali Ama says, I feel like a spirit communicating from inside a body. Hmm. This life is truly a symphony of thoughts expressing themselves from a form. The play changes, the form changes. You two are really playing with the forms, lightening the density of being in form, playing and reading your own scripts. Wunderbar. Hmm. Yeah. So like what I am hearing when you say that, Aliyama, is that beauty is not a fixed thing. It's hmm. not an objective fixed thing. Beauty is actually this life coming through us, animating us. It's the Shakti. It's the life force. It's the aliveness. Absolutely. Absolutely. Huzzah. Huzzah. Huzzah, I say. Totally. So, now, Huzzah. Yes. On, onwards now to the next beauty practice. Well, <clears throat> what is it? It is becoming real. Oh. Now, that. <laughs> Is beautiful. How do we do that, Ariel? Well, you know, it's a lifelong practice. The Tibetans, oh. that's their central question for their entire spiritual journey is, how do we tell what's real? Wow. You know, that's their dealio. And they're doing it so that when they transition, because they're the death consciousness uh, peeps, totally. Yeah, they're the, the wands <laughs> that really have that technology down. And it's to be able to discern 
what is real in this lifetime assist you when you transit the bardos in knowing what is real and what is just projection of your mind. Now then. Now then. <laughs> now, <laughs> now we're okay. going to get down to business here because trying to discern what is a projection of your mind and what is real is a central issue for you to be lensing your consciousness through in this lifetime in order to live your life more fully and not just have a conscious death as the Tibetans focus on, but now. Mm -hmm. So in order to do this beauty practice of telling what is real, I'm going to read you something from one of my favorite children stories. And Ooh. thank you, Grayson, for sending this along to Uma so that I could have it today because oh. that's the way Mother inspires me is someone sends me something. This comes from the Velveteen Rabbit on Becoming Real. Real is not how you're made, said the skin horse. It's a thing that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, mm. then you become real. Well, does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Well, sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you are real, you just don't mind being hurt. Mm. Well, does it happen all at once, like being wound up, he asked, or bit by bit? Well, it doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges or have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been rubbed off, your eyes have dropped out, and you have loose joints and are very shabby, I can attest the matter. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you cannot be ugly except for people who do not understand. Perhaps we are our own children and the rabbits we learn to love for a long, long time are ourselves. And then we begin to see that there is so much beauty on the interior that the exterior oh. no longer matters. <sighs> Is that just divine beyond divine? Oh, can you post that? Let's put we're going to post that onto the Facebook page so that everybody can um can read that. Yeah. I think that we need to post that because oh. it's such an amazing simple wise woman simple. Yeah. Wisdom. Totally. It is. And that is getting real. That means, you know, I, it means all the things of aging. You get shabby. You know what I mean? You just don't have it all. You get loose. You <laughs> supposed to have it all And together. your joints start. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, and so it's such a wonderful thing to recognize that that very realness is what makes someone love you even more. That nobody doesn't love me because I'm fat or because I have bad breath or whatever comes along with aging, they just love me and I'm real and they know that and that's part of why they love me and why I love you. <laughs> so let's get real. That's the point of this. Let's really start to discern what is real and what you have been enculturated with to believe is real. Oh, give me chills, Ariel. Ooh, I have tears in my in my eyes from just um, feeling into that transition in my own being of what is real, mm -hmm. and and the willingness to cease the game of perfection, which mm. is so connected into the goddess of love, in terms of this idea of always having to be more, better, beautiful, that shadow, and actually sinking into the love mm -hmm. that is already here, but that sense of um, this is a challenge, an archetypal challenge for you all, is to really look at your life and look at how you're still trying to prove yourself, mm. how you're still trying to be good enough, how you're still trying to get the love that you think that you need out there, mm. through whatever means, through whether it's being beautiful, being good enough, being bright enough, being loving enough, whatever the hell it is, and to really look at what's real, as Aria would say, because I know for me, the heart, I've gone through a, like a massive transition in the last year of my own life and what's real for me is the more that I let go, 
the more real I become. Really, the more yeah. that I let go of what it is I think I should be and I allow myself to be who I actually am and to live the life that I actually um, truly want to be living that's really true for me, the more real I get to be. And that's been a revelation for me. And mm. I think it com I do think it comes with age. Now another crow just went past. Oh, yes. Well, then we'll have to bring the crows out. I, and I think it comes with that wisdom, that wild, simple wisdom of the child story, of the wise woman story, of mm. just letting yourself feel what's real. Mm -hmm. As yeah. opposed to... And that's the key. Right, the feeling. Feel feeling. what's real. So beauty is a feeling, and what is real is a feeling. It's a feeling, and I want to, Ariel, you've been a great teacher for me around this, the difference between emotions and feelings. I've been an emotional creature all my life, and emotions are amazing. Emotions are, are wonderful, and they're connected to your emotional body, which is really your ego's body of reaction, right? And it's how we, it's how we navigate the world as young things. And what I've learned through this path of priestessing and through this path of deepening is the difference between an emotion and a feeling. And a feeling is usually something that's so much more subtle. When I say beauty is a feeling, it's the energetic body that's feeling. Mm -hmm. It's not a reaction. It's a feeling. It's state. a primary response right? rather than a reaction. And that discernment I want to invite us all into because that's how you're going to, in my book, how we're going to come to understand what real beauty is, mm -hmm. is when we can discern the feeling of beauty which is that primary response of a feeling of awe, a feeling of being filled up. So I feel really filled up and nourished. I too. Oh, I do. I feel very nourished. What? Well, hang on a second. So back back to you. Over to you. In the no, world out the there. Over to you out there. Okay, there's global a couple community that we're so Jules. thrilled are here. Jules says, loving you both, wise, wild, beautiful women, comfortable in the reality of you, of now, of the divine feminine within us. Keep rocking. Yahoo! Thank you for all your offerings, wisdom, and for all you bring as radiant path showers and world keepers of the fame. Woo! Thank you, Jules. Wendy. Thank you, Ariel and Elaine, for answering your from sharing your radiant and beautiful energy. Beauty is always around us and inside us and appears when we are ready to receive it. Always. It's mm. everywhere. <laughs> Mar Marjorie says, beauty is an energy that is an aspect of the divine. Absolutely. Yay. Absolutely. Ah, so I know we have one other beauty practice that I don't want us to miss out on, Maria, because what they've been... What is well, it? hang on a second. We can't be missing well, well, no, 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 something no. we don't want to miss no, out he, on. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, well, those crows that have been flowing by. Well, I, I feel like this is important okay. to bring up. Yes, carry okay. on. Okay. So, so, so what we want to do is have someone type in an issue that you have been having with somebody else. Like, you know, you're in conversation around this kind of thing. Uh, and we'll take that, and if something comes in in a timely way, we'll make one up otherwise. We will, because we can make anything up. You know? We can. But, but if you but have one, there goes another crow. I know, they're busy. Okay, the crows they're busy, are busy. busy. So what Ariel is asking for is if anyone has a current competition, comparison, niggledom thing happening, if you're willing to write it in, if you're willing to get vulnerable with us right now and to write in. Something just came in. Oh, oh no. Rebecca, no, Rebecca's no. saying something else. Okay. We want more, she wants more on feelings and emotions. Okay, well, let's make one up. Just make, now, let's now. make one up. Okay. So are you ready? Yeah. yeah so make one up. We're going to pretend here. Yes. You're going to be the issuee. Oh, and, I'm the issuee. And I'm the issuer or whatever. <laughs> and so we're going to decide we have an issue. About, we have an issue. What's the issue? Let's just define the issue. What? What's the issue we want to have? Oh, oh. It's so, oh, I don't know. I, I'm so out of my mind. I have no issues. I know. Right now. <laughs> what are we going to do about that? Neither do I. Uh, oh, Leah has one. Okay. Leah, write it in. Write it in, honey. We'd love one. Uh, yeah, by all means, just tell us what it is. Yeah. Having one is only the first part of the yes. equation. Leah, darling, <laughs> write it in. Type it in as fast as your little fingers can do it. Okay. Okay, we'll wait one more minute well, and then yes. we're making up something. Yes. Uh, ooh, uh, uh. In the meantime, Risa says, I guess I need a copy of that wonderful book for myself as a reminder. And also for the comments about the Bardos, where we take our habits to seeing ourselves through all of the chaos, being willing to speak one's truth, no strings attached. <laughs> and Rebecca, oh, there we go. Hang on. Oh, uh, 
Okay, Leah says, I have been watching a beautiful sister who is coming out as a leader in the priestessing community, and I love that she is bringing attention to the work, but I experience her focus on outer beauty. And I judge her for it, I guess. Oh, good. Okay. Now we're ready. Okay, ready? Ready. Okay. So we'd like to introduce you. Ready? Uh -huh. Ready? One, no, two, ready. Ah! Hi, my Hello. name's Nettie Nettie, and I am Eddie 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 Eddie. Eddie. Hi, we're oh, oh. and I've got my hands up my head while they're my mouth. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so there. Okay, right. So it goes like this. You know, all together. What I've been noticing is that you seem to have a focus on outer beauty. Really? Really? Well, how, well, 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 how do you see that? Oh, just look at you right now, primping along like this. Well, you're, like, you're, you're making a mohawk. Yes, I, I'm just doing my hair. You're very, very creative. Just very doing creative. It. I'm not focused on outer beauty. I just, I just, I just like a mohawk. Oh, you just like to fluff yourself. Yes, I like fluffing. Oh, I see that. I can see that actually. Well, and, well, well, well what are you really so, saying? I'm really saying I love you. Oh, that's oh, so oh, 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 Do you love me just the way I am? I love you just the way you are. But what happens if my and mohawk flops? Well, it's okay. Is because it? I love you just. You're real. I don't have way. to do it. No, honey, you could be just the way you are. <laughs> There you are. So there you well, go. So basically, <laughs> in a, in a, in a, get over in a all nutshell, the, all the feathers out of here now. Yes, in a nutshell, that technique, if you want to call it that, <laughs> uh, beauty practice, is when you want to wrinkle up your face and get really issue and issuey with someone, and then you do that back to me, exactly like that. Well, then instead of doing that. I highly recommend that you get two puppets and you discuss the issue through the lensing of those puppets instead of your own tatty hamster-like storyline that goes on and on just the way it always does over and over mm. expecting a different outcome. Mm. But if you're willing to do it with puppets, all sorts of new things start arising as a possibility and I find that beautiful. Mm. Novelty is beautiful to the divine as well as to myself. So I have a, 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 a an addendum to that, which is, should you not happen to have a crow puppet? Yes. Because sometimes you don't have one handy. You could just bring in the naked version. Yes, exactly. All oh, right, then. Oh, very good idea, but, actually. Because That's an excellent idea. And and they're naked and vulnerable, as you can see. Yes, quite. Yes, quite naked and vulnerable. Oh, oh. So, the last time you didn't clean the kitchen, I'm telling you what, all together, I just lost it. I know you just lost it, but you're beautiful anyway. Well, that's not what you're going to say to me. You're going to say, no, I cleaned the kitchen the last time. Well, actually, I did. Well, no, you didn't. Well, I, I did. No, I did. Oh, I'm sure it was me. No, not. Yeah, what? 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 What you can see here now is, oh, sweetheart, what difference does it matter who cleaned the, the kitchen. kitchen? You're so precious. Oh, I know. I know. I'm so oh. precious. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me of my preciousness. <laughs> See how well, it works? There's a demo. There's a demo. So you see, this is the thing. Ha, um, oh, they're, they're, they're all flooding in. All their competition things <laughs> are flooding in now, aren't they? Really, well, they'll have to do it themselves. You'll have right? to do it yourself. Yes. Leah says, thank you, beautiful. And I think Leah's other part was, I'm desiring the substance you bring and what I learned through my initiations. I want to support her and I'm feeling a sadness. So this is the, this is the invitation would be to break the projection of her outward beauty by playing with it. See, this is the thing, is one of the beauty practices is play uh, as absolutely. you might as you might, might have gained from this conversation. From this conversation <clears throat> is that and play comes in many different forms. So I wanna I wanna sort of tie all that up for a moment because everything we've done here has been playing, whether it was with this or with this or with these. Every part of this was done in the spirit of play. Because play is that place where we meet the creativity and the spontaneity of the moment, which is really a great beauty practice, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Spontaneity. That's so what beautiful. I was saying about novelty and spontaneity. Right, exactly. Yeah. So we have about one minute oh, come left. On. In Earth time, we only have one minute yes. left. Oh, if my we're going, well, we don't have to go off of 
Yeah, well, that's what? not them. They'll what just you... have to turn it off when they're bored. Okay. Well, you, do you have something else you want to share? No, yes. I, I okay. Okay. Do. Good. Well, well, then we're not done yet because the wise woman says. Oh, is God. This, is this backwards on your screen? It's backwards on mine. The mind cage removal services. Can we please hear about that? I'd like to hire you. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, good. How do I I've do that? I've always wanted to do that. Yes. Well, you see, the way you get to get into the mind cage removal services, you actually start thinking with your heart instead oh. of your mind, and then it just naturally moves. It removes itself. That's how it works. You start listening to the intelligence of the heart instead of always to the <laughs> of the mind. Mind cage removal services. Mind cage removal services. services, which I am going to do live at the live solstice event on this Saturday in so the Bay Area. If you're, if you're in the Bay Those Area, of you, now we're celebrating solstice in this very wacky wise woman today, but you know it's a high holiday for the fairies and everybody else on the planet. Gaia is celebrating. These are like acupuncture points. These eight turns of the wheel, and here we are at the height of light. This night, so well, actually, in time, timelessness on Saturday, but we are very close to that, and so all the celebrations and novelty and play that we can have on these acupressure puncture points for the Earth, uh, planetarily speaking, vivify the possibility of lifting the frequency of Earth, and so to celebrate in some way, whatever it is, yourself or with others the solstice season in some particular way is really an important way to honor yourself and Gaia mm -hmm. at the same time so that this is our honoring for our whole global community which we're so thrilled that you finally figured out how to do this and another crow just there flew by so it's all good so we'll be coming back to you soon with another temple keeper I'm going to uh, going to be the wacky wise woman that interviews all the temple keepers over time. Ah, oh. And, oh, and of course, <laughs> it may or may not be in a timed way like once a moon because that just wouldn't be like me. But as soon as we can get the energy moving in that direction, we'll do another one of these and create uh, madness and fun and delight together coherently with all these different temple keepers. So please come to the Solstice Live if you're able to and if you're not, you're there with us. Thank you, everyone who tuned in today. I'm so delighted that you chose to spend your solstice in this particular wacko, 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 wise woman and goddess of love way. So for anyone who is listening to this later as a recording, because it will be available as a recording, we want to oh, give thanks. a shout out to all of you because I know there's a bunch of you who are going to be revisiting this or listening for the first time. Know that we are loving you wherever you are in this moment and you are part of this global community that we are electrifying energetically right from this moment. We are wanting... Oh, Honestly, honestly, Nettie. Nettie, Nettie. Um, that we're really wanting to have an intention here, and I want to just take a moment with Ariel to ground this intention in our hearts. So everyone come to your heart who is here live with us, and those of you who are watching, you can do this retroactively. Just take a breath into your heart and just see this circle of the 13 Moon Mystery School, the Sanctuary of the Open Heart spanning the entire globe, planetary priests and priestesses walking this path. Hmm. And just seeing a thread from your own heart joining to the hearts of all the brothers and sisters in oneness and unity. As we take our community, our community temple, this temple on the etheric, as we take this to the next level of being connected in a way that is so powerful and committed to walking as love. And so I'm just inviting us all to mm. see that as happening this very moment. Mm. I'm just feeling that connection and strengthening that. And so it is. And one way that you can stay connected to us is via the Facebook page, darlings. And keeping posting, we'd love to hear your comments and responses ongoingly to this conversation that we had today. Mm. 
We'd love to hear your beauty practices. We'd love to hear how you're clearing competition for yourself and for the collective. And um, I just really, really want to bow down to you, Ariel, for being here. <laughs> Don't be so ridiculous. And bow down to all of all you. All of you. And have you bow down to each other exactly. as sisters and brothers of this one heart. And this has been just delightful. Doesn't it, Joss? I feel so nourished. So totally nourished. And so, um, oh, one thing. Yes, yes. If you haven't read the Goddess of Love communication from it's in the Sanctuary it is. Present newsletter, please read it. She's written so much beauty in there. Beauty. And there is the Ariel's Hotwire holographic oh. communication that just went out about this very subject. Both of them were interlinked, as you might have imagined. And so you can. Where do they get the link if they? aren't able to come on this time. How do they oh, get there? Oh, that's fine. So you you mean if they can't come to the like if they weren't so here. They were if you weren't here, <laughs> you know. Well, you know <laughs> I can't I tell you how to get the link. Yes. But what you need to know, darling ones, is for those of you who are here, you're going to get an email later on today with a link to this replay. And oh, anyone okay. who wasn't here will get the link to the replay. So it's all good. Oh you mean the whole world? Yes. How fabulous. Yes, yes. yes oh yes, the yes, technology yes, is just yes. getting stunning. So blessings, beautiful beings, we mm -hmm. will leave you now to the rest of your day and thank you for being so participatory with us thank you 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 Mwah. we love you we love you Mwah. Mwah. and till next time till next time toodaloo as they say toodaloo pay tune in